Hi everybody, this is Lorraine Tierney with Chat and Craft with Lorraine and I wish you all a very happy Sunday afternoon. I'm coming on today because I want to make this beautiful snowflake um, ornament or it could just be a decoration you hang um, in a window or from a ceiling or I think it would even look beautiful atop a gift as a bow or a decoration. So this is made with the Lights Aglow Designer Series paper, and that paper has um, gold sparkle in it. I love it. This paper has sold out. It was on the last chance um, sale. I think it actually sold out before the sale even started. Um, but if you have this in your stash, um, all you need is one six by six piece to make this, and it would be beautiful. Today we're going to make it in a um, different pattern, but I have a little bit of this paper left and I'm sure going to make some more of these snowflakes um, with this paper. So uh, right, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need is a piece of 6x6 paper. And any 6x6 designer series paper will work. Um, I think it's important to consider both sides because you will see both sides of the paper as you can see on this one. So make sure that you're okay with both sides and you're going to take this and you're just going to cut it into half inch strips and you'll have 12 half inch strips and I decided you didn't need to watch me do that. That's pretty basic. So here are my um, 12 strips cut out of a six by six piece of paper and I'm going to use my silicone mat with this because it gets a little bit messy with all of the um, liquid glue and I do find liquid glue works best with this and if you have a little holder that you can keep your glue upside down I take the top off and just keep it um, like this so that each time I pick it up the glue is ready to go that works really well and the other thing that's good to have handy is a little bit of hand sanitizer and I see that mine has gone missing um, the hand sanitizer quickly dissolves that glue off your fingers if they get a little sticky so I'm going to try to do it without it um, I have an X on my um, silicone mat. I cut it in half and cut it in half again or drew a line in half and another line in half with a Sharpie. But as you can see, you could use the line on your grid paper and that shows through too. And I just wanted to know where the center was for um, my paper to get started. If you don't want to draw a line on that, you just fold two of these strips in half right in the center. Let's see if I can do it so that you have that um, visual that tells you where the center is. And then you would do the same thing with the second one. And then you'll intersect them right on that fold line and you'll have each of them centered. So that's how we get started. And you're going to put the paper that you want to be on top will face down as you make your snowflake. So I want this paper to be showing. So I'm going to face it down. We're going to see, I think these are pomegranates on the other side. I'm not sure. Does anybody know what they are? Please say hello if you're watching today. I would love to say hello and see who's here. Okay, so I just made an X for that first one. And now we're going to glue two more, one on either side of that one. Hi, Courtney. Courtney with a beautiful Christmas tree up. I saw some pictures of her Christmas tree yesterday. Okay, so I just put a little glue there and I'm going to try to get it 
close to the one I glued on already, but not overlapping. And if there's a little bit of space, that's okay. Hi, MJ. Hello, Fran. Okay. So here I have those three on. And I'm going to give them just a second to dry. They're going to take a little bit time. Hi, Leah. Thanks for watching. That um, liquid glue does take a second to dry. And so um, I'll tell you that what we're doing right now, hi, Jan, you will need to make two of these to make one snowflake. And I have the second one started so that you won't have to um, be bored watching too much. But after I put this first one together, I am going to work on a second one. So if you'd like to see it again, you can stay on and see a second one. Okay, so now um, let's go back a second. I had this like this with the three of them going vertically, and now I'm going to turn it. I find it easier to work with it horizontal. And we're basically going to weave a strip under just like that, but I'm going to put a little glue on here first. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the top one and the bottom one and then the middle of the one that I'm going to slide into place. So I'm just weaving this in. So it's just under the middle piece and I'll pick that up in a second to show you. Okay, so I picked up the middle piece and put it under there. It's over this first one, under and over. If it used two different patterns, it would be a little bit easier to see this, but it doesn't. So again, I'm going to pick up the middle one. I'll put a little glue on the top and the bottom. And then when I get this into place, I can put a little bit of glue right under where this flap is going to come down. So I'm just putting a little glue or a lot of glue under there. And I'm going to hold that for a second. And that would take a couple minutes to dry. And so you would make your second base while that was drying, okay? And here's another one through the magic of TV. I have it done already. Um, and we don't need the silicone mat for that anymore. So this is just like the one that we just did, except it's dry. So now I'm gonna show you one thing about what not to do. This one was built incorrectly. Do you see how these points are all coming into the middle? That's wrong. You want your points. Let's see if I put some glue on this one. This was my first attempt. So maybe use a paper you don't love the first time. You want the point to point outward. Can you see the difference? This is pointing inward. This one is pointing out away from the center. And I have way too much glue on that. You can see why your fingers get a little sticky. Okay, so that's what we want. So you do that by taking one piece from two different sets of three and you turn them towards the top and then line up those two pieces together and it makes that point. Okay, so I'm taking two pieces and I'm going to put them just like that. Okay, with a little bit of glue right there. And again, I'll have to hold that. I find if you hold it, move it around just a little so the whole thing gets glue on it, and count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It will stay 
very nicely. So again, that point is pointing away. Now I'm going to do the next one. Some glue on the side that you know is going to show. Okay, and I turn it so the points are going up. This is the wrong way towards me. Hi, Jackie. This is the right way going up. So these are really cute. Once you do this once, Okay, so there's two. I'm going to turn it again. And I find it easiest to put the glue on the one on the right. Maybe if you're left-handed, you would do it the opposite way. Here, whoops, here we go. My point is going to away from me towards the top, towards the north pole. And I'm going to hold that till it sets. Okay, there's another one. And I have one more of those to do on this one. And like I said, you're going to do this twice. But through the magic of TV, I have the next one started. Okay. Let's see. when I have an extra glue and it's sliding a little bit. You can check the back if you want to make sure you're lined up as well as you can be. Okay, so that is done. Your middle pieces are just lying there and you've got four points. Okay. So now I have two of these because I did one already. I have two of these and I'm going to take one and tip it over and put it right on top. So it's rotated um, so that it fits in. If I put it the exact same way, it would be way up like this, like a clamshell. I'm going to rotate it and it they fit right in between. But we have all these little things sticking out. So we just tuck those into the points of the snowflake. So you'll tuck four in from this side. Oh, oh I'm not. I rushed that a little bit, I guess. Okay. Four in from this side. My fingers are sticky and then four in from this side. Okay, so now they're all looped in and we're going to glue them into place. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm not pulling them tight. I'm not pulling that out. I'm actually gonna push it in a little bit and glue it so that it's closer to the end and then we're going to trim these two little pieces off. So I'm going to put some glue there and pushing that piece back towards the center just a little bit, not too much. And I have to hold it there again. Okay, and now I'll do this next one. Same thing, I'll put some glue on the end and then put my, I pushed it back towards the center and now I hold it. Oh, my fingers are sticky. I know what I did with the hand sanitizer. I used it on Orson's hands. And we left it in the bathroom. All right, another little bit. 
and this is pretty forgiving if you're not you feel like you're not a hundred percent lined up just make it work and hold it with the glue until it's lined up where you want it to be and it will be okay okay and I have one more to do on this side and then we'll flip it over and do the other side I couldn't couldn't pre-do this part for you okay so now I'll flip it over and we'll do this part you can see it's a little bit sunken in so if I push these back a little bit when I glue it that will help it not be sunken in so more glue and then hold it tell me if you have your Christmas cards completed already I had some help with my Christmas cards this year my um, team and people from my Tuesday night zoom class many of them sent me Christmas cards knowing that my time was short so they made Christmas cards that I could use it's been wonderful I thank them very much so I'm not making any more Christmas cards but I have not finished writing them out yet I hope to get that done tonight or tomorrow I like to get them in the mail Courtney, I'm guessing yours are done. Okay. We have just a couple more of these to do, and then you'll see the next step. Just continuing to glue those little pieces down. I think this is our last one. This one looks a little skinnier than the others and it might be and that's okay it's not gonna matter once this is put together okay and I'll hold that oh wow the last one came undone I must have rushed that a little bit place okay I'm just holding these last two and we'll see what we do next circles here I have Courtney you don't send Christmas cards look at me I'm speechless I had to stop to make sure I was reading that correctly you're a card maker huh um, so on this one I used a gold foil circle that I cut with a scalloped circle from the layering circle dies and then a stitched circle from stylish shapes um, since this paper doesn't have um, gold in it, I'm just going to use a red scalloped edge circle and the same size white um, circle from the stitch shapes. And I'm going to use the little holly leaves because I think they look very similar to what's in the paper. And um, this Merry Christmas to decorate the circle. So I'm going to start with the Merry Christmas. Um, the bow on this one comes from the same cottage wreaths set too. It's a really nice stamp and the dies have a really cute bow that it cuts out. Okay, I'm going to put this right in the center on this one. I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Okay, and then I'm going to add some ink to my gluey fingers because I see some ink on this block. 
that I don't want on there. And I did not bring my dirty chamois over. Okay, and this has two of those little leaves. They're on the same stamp. And I'm going to try to just stamp. I'm going to try not to get my head in the camera. I'm going to try to just stamp us around the Merry Christmas with the green holly leaf. Uh, they're not really leaves. I don't know what they are. Evergreen sprigs? It's not holly. I'm calling it holly. But I know it's not holly. Okay, now I need just one. Let's see if I can. Can't do it with that one. Maybe I can do it with this one. I don't know. Let's see. There we go. So I kind of rocked and rolled it a little bit. And I will. Put a little glue on this. Now I'm going to jump up for a second and get oh, they're over here someplace. Well, maybe not. I wanted some little gold. I put one little gold bling right in the center on this one. And I was going to put some gold on that, but I can't find it at the moment. So I will wait. I'm going to put that right there. And now we're going to trim these little tails here. So I'm just going to trim them so they're the same shape as the ends of the snowflake. And they're going to all stick to my scissors because I have not bought myself a pair of those Teflon scissors yet that you guys told me about the last time I did this. I'll have to get working on that. So I'm just using the point of the snowflake as the guide. And I'm going around and trimming off the end. It works better from this angle. So one and then two. By the time we get to the last point, I'll have this figured out. Hopefully. Okay, so one and then We are almost done. And like I said, this will get um, easier for you to do. Think of your first one as kind of a bit of an experiment. And then you'll have it down. It's, it's really getting the glue to dry. It takes most of your time. And I have one more to do right here. I gotta get that out of the way. I can't see what I'm doing. This way. Okay. They're either stuck. deeper in the center than, um, than on the edges. So I'm going to put two dimensionals in the center there. I'm just going to stack them. I don't know what's happening with my internet. It looks like I lost signal there for a second. I hope that it didn't interrupt the video. And now I'm going to put a couple on the outside of this circle. Okay. 
and I can put my hand right inside here to hold on to it a little bit and get this centered. And once you put that center piece on, I think it really finishes that off. It looks so pretty. And of course you need to be able to hang it. So I have my handy dandy uh, crocodile from years gone by and I'm going to just punch a hole Oops, right there and I'm going to use the whoops I'm spilling this out I'm going to use the simply elegant trim there's gold and silver and I made the other one I made the loop on this one I think too short to hang on the Christmas tree. I'm not sure a little branch will fit in there. Um, Courtney, the measurements are for the strip, you start with a six by six piece of paper and just cut the whole thing into half inch strips. You need 12 half inch strips, six for each half of the snowflake. Okay, and so now I'm going to just put a little knot in the top of this and it will be done. Whoop, well, maybe not because I took the knot right out. There you go. And this will be ready to hang. So my grandson can hang these on the Christmas tree. I think they're really pretty. I was hoping he'd be able to make them with me, but I think it's a little bit too much gluing and patience for that. So here are these two, and I'm gonna finish the next one here if you want to see one more. Um, but this is how they look. They're just beautiful. And if I can help you with supplies to make this, please let me know. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I live in Warner, New Hampshire, and I would be happy to hook you up with a catalog or help you place an order so that you can make this kind of great stuff. But I'm not going to go away. That's just in case you are done. Thank you, Courtney and Jackie. I'm glad you like them. I'm just going to put one more of these together. So here's my six pieces of, or strips that I started with. This has had a chance to dry now. And I'm going to put my snowflake together like this. The outside piece from either side and the point going away from me. Don't be like Lorraine and make it backwards. It looks like a claw. Thank you, MJ. Of course, it's not an original idea. I think Joe Blackman, who's a demonstrator in the United Kingdom, I saw a video that she did, I think it was four years ago, and I've kind of had this in my back pocket for a while, and I was reminded of it today, or last night, by something, and so here we are. Okay, so there's one. I turn it. I take the outside one and just curl them so they point away. And I put a little glue on this. And then you just have to hold that there for a little bit to keep it let so it sets same thing outside one from each side and turn it and I'll have to make one more of these with that six by six piece that I've been oh no I have the strips right here the rest of the strips that I cut from the other one I'll make one more of these so that I can put it together once these dry. Okay, 
I have one more to do on this. So unless you have any questions about any of the steps on this, I am going to sign off and finish the rest of this one, not on the live. I don't think I need to make a second one. I'll give you just a second in case you have any questions and because I can't seem to get this one to stick. There we go. I really think it would work with any designer series paper. In fact, um, in Joe Blackman's video, I think she used a green and black paper and it looked pretty cool when it was done. I liked going a little more Christmassy. Um, the Lights Aglow would, has a snowflake paper, a, a very vanilla covered snowflake, colored snowflake paper. Um, and I think that would look really pretty in this. I didn't have um, two pieces of that so that I could make some ahead to show you, but I probably will make one with one of those. So MJ, you start with a six by six piece of designer series paper and you just cut the, it into half inch strips and you'll get 12 half inch strips and you use six to make one base and then six to make your other base. Right, Valerie, half inch strips. Thank you for answering that question too. All right, well, I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday afternoon. I hope you're doing some crafting and feeding your soul and um, enjoy this holiday season. And I'll be back hopefully again next Sunday. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.